first speaker of the day, Marc Chardin. He will talk about residual intersection. Marc is a GCA in France, is a big exponent actually of commutative algebra in France, unfortunately. We don't have as many, and Marc is fantastic, has done so much and you know, organized so many conferences at Lumini and made France a point for commutative algebra as well. I met Marc almost 30 years ago, unfortunately. And I would like to remember that time because it was a big time for tight closure. It was actually a conference, a CBS meeting in Fargo in July 1995. And Craig Unicke gave 10 fantastic lectures on tight closure. It was my first actual introduction to tight closure. And Mel Oxter gave a very, very good talk, I still remember two of them, on tight closure and characteristic zero and the meaning of tight closure and characteristic zero. This was an amazing meeting. I met so many people. It was the end of my PhD, and Mark was one of the fantastic meetings I met there, and it started a very, very long friendship. So with big pleasure, I introduce Mark Chardin. We'll talk about one of my favorite subjects, residual intersection. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Claudia. I can <laughs> Okay, and as you will see, I mean, this is very much related to early work of Craig, but let me start. I mean, you have seen it yesterday with, um, with Bent already. So, the, well, so my subject today is residual intersection, and you already know what it is, but I will, <laughs> the first part of my talk will be very much very close to what Bernd explained yesterday, but anyway, I decided to recall this somehow. So, in all the talks, R will be a coin Macaulay Rocco ring. But everything that uh, I will explain extends to what is called you sometimes star Rocco. It means a graded situation where you have a unique graded maximum ideal. But this takes longer to, for the statements and all that, but so I, I will stick to this local case, which is sufficient for most of other things. So my, f the first part will be about liaison or linkage in a coin macro ring, like yesterday, okay? So I remind the definition of liaison or linkage. And so two R ideals I and J are linked by a complete intersection ideal B. So it's an ideal B equal X. Whoops, uh, what will be my notations? Uh, maybe it's better to put F1, FR. Okay, such that the co dimension or height of B is equal to R, so that's a complete intersection ideal, and you require that J is equal to B colon I and J equal, oh sorry, I equal B colon J, okay? That's linkage, okay? And um, so some remarks on that. So this implies, as Bernd mentioned, that both I and J are next. So they all, both have only associated primes of height R. Okay. And uh, if, on the other hand, if I and J are next, are supposed to be unmixed, these conditions are equivalent. Okay, so this, the two conditions are equivalent, provided that R localized at P is Gornstein for all P that contains I plus J and I of P is equal to R. Okay, so in particular, it's Gornstein could mention R, but also if the height of I plus J is bigger than R, okay, and this is called geometric. So, the, so if the so height of codimension, I will use maybe two words, but uh, co if codimension of I plus J is bigger than R, and this is called geometric residual intersection, because it means they do not share any associated prime, 
Okay, then you know that this one is equivalent to the other, provided they are unmixed. And uh, moreover, in this case, you have that the co-dimension of I plus J is equal to R plus 1, and the ring of I plus J is Gorenstein. So that's a nice way also to produce Gorenstein rings. Okay. Uh, well, now, if you iterate here, this liaison, so iterating this, you get that you can start from an ideal I, then you link by a first ideal computer detection B1 to an ideal, say, maybe I1, whatever, and you continue n times to link to an ideal J. Okay? And then there is an old theorem of Dubray dates from 1935, that tells you that the if n is even, okay, then the depth of R mod I is equal to the depth of R mod J. So in the inbound linked class, you have the same depth. And now if further R is Gorenstein, and this is Peskin and Spiro, quite later, and was published in 74, tells you that if R is Gorenstein, then R mod R A is coin Macaulay, if and only if R mod J is coin Macaulay. Okay, nevertheless, I mean, the, 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 it's not true that the depths will be the same, but uh, you can say things about the depths from one from the other, but I won't enter into that. But it's, uh, I mean, for instance, if, if locally, your coin Macaulay, then the local cohomology models the, 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 that measure the defects of coin Macaulay will be permuted and dualized. So you can, you can say what happens, but it's a, a little bit more complicated. So what is the key point uh, in these two terms, okay, is uh, what gives the so-called liaison sequence, is that if you look at J mod B, then this is, by definition, um, zero divided by I module uh, B. Okay, and so you can write this as harm over R of R mod I into R mod B. Okay, and here the correspondence and element here correspond to the, the map that's N1 to, to X. Okay, so, so this map is defined if and only if. Excellent. that. So this gives you this isomorphism. But now, since B is a complete intersection, this module is isomorphic to this X module into R. Okay. And you see on that that this doesn't depend on B. This is independent of B. Okay. And that's the key thing to relate. Because, I mean, B has no cohomology. So you, you get that the for instance, the local cohomology modules with respect to the maximal will be the same for I and J, except the last two. You have to be a little bit careful about the last two, but that's, that's the key thing. And now, if further you are Gorenstein, this will be just a canonical module of R mod I, if you are Gorenstein. So if further you are Gorenstein, it tells you that uh, this, well, on, on top of being independent of B, it's also depending on the ring somehow, it only depends on R mod I, and that's, that's very important as well, okay. Now, another thing is that uh, Dubray, Dubray, oops, needs N to be even, and there is a nice example already in the paper of Peskin Spiro that shows that. I mean, if you take the ideal I, so this will be a projective example. So it won't be about you. You can localize, but it will be typically the graded case. Okay. So you take the following ideal. In the, so this will be correspond to curves in P3. So you take a polynomial field with uh, four variables. So you take uh, well, x0, x3 minus x1, x2, and another equation x0, x2 squared minus x1 squared x3. And this ideal defines uh, rational quartic union 
two lines. Okay, and this is easy to see because this vanishes on the rational quartic. It has degree six, this has degree four, and you have the two lines, so it's easy to show it's equal. Okay, and also these two lines, these are explicit, that mean they do not intersect. Okay, so first, I mean, by uh, Piskin Spiro, you know that R modulo IC intersection I1 is called Macaulay because L2. R model 2 is called Macaulay. But also, as these are disconnected, you know that R module IC is not called Macaulay because this union of lines doesn't give something like called Macaulay. Okay, but on the other hand, R module I1 is called Macaulay. So, this is, a, I mean, one link, okay, in a called Macaulay ring, one side is not called Macaulay where the other one is. So, there is no chance for Du Bois theorem to be true. Uh, okay, now there is a nice term of Charles Walter. Well, that, that says that this is not an isolated phenomenon. So this is in 93, which in 93. And they say that if you take C, well, it's more general, but I'll just give this. If you g give C in PN a curve, Okay, any curve, which means you have no associated points, okay? Then there exists another curve, C prime, in the same Pn, such that both R module IC prime and R module IC intersected IC prime are con macaulay So any curve could be linked to a con macaulay curve by a con macaulay Curve, that is the union of the two. So there is no chance. I mean, if you look at like uh, liaison classes for Baiko and Macaulay, this is everybody is the same uh, liaison class. It's easy to deduce from that. Okay. On the other hand, if you fix the ring, okay, and you look at how you pass from one guy to another, that's a different story. Okay. But if you are allowed to ring by any coin Macaulay guys, that's Okay. So if you ring by complete intersection in a coin macaulay ring, many things are kept okay, or, or transformed in a way that is similar okay, for all even and all odd. Okay. But this is different. You ring by coin macaulay and then the, nothing is gone. Okay. So now, uh, to understand what happens, as Ben explained, I mean, you uh, uniquely introduced uh, cosy homology. So now let's assume your idea I. Oh, this was bad. I mean, this should be. Well, anyway. no, XIs were a good idea here. Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, these are just linked. I mean, so uh, this means that, uh, I mean, this is geometric linkage. So you have that. Uh, of course, this is easy to see. When it's geometric, you always have that IC will be I of C union C prime, uh, colon I C prime, and the other way around. So when you have a geometric operation, there is no, no problem in uh, reversing or whatever, and the other way around. Okay? So we are just, I mean, okay, so it's, uh, I mean, the, the, the thing might not be, um, uh, reflexive if uh, if you are locally on the intersection, I mean, you, you're not really not uh, Gronstein, so, uh, even at the generic point. So, but uh, if you do geometric linkage, you don't need to ask both. So, so this is uh, thing. So now, uh, well, let's choose generators of I, say I equal F1, Fp, okay, and then consider the causal homology module. So this would be HI of the causal complex on the Fs over the ring R, okay? So these are, I mean, well, these are uh, M mod I modules, okay? And uh, then you put the definition as in Bernd yesterday, you say that I is strongly on Macaulay if these HIs are Quine Macaulay for all i. 
Okay? And, uh, well, this implies, in fact, that these are all uh, maximal cohen macoy R modern modules, okay? And they do satisfy some dualities. This was proved by Herzog, okay? And uh, now, uh, what has I wanted to say? Yeah, so why introducing this? One very simple way to see why this is important, maybe I'll continue here, is that if you look at the module HP minus R, so number of generators, I mean, you can choose different size of generators. Typically, you take minimum one, but it doesn't matter. This module is isomorphic to this module we have seen before, X R R R mod R into R. Okay? So knowing that this guy is called McCoy, of course, we force things to be good. Okay? But before stating this, I will state this first important theorem of Munique in 81 that says that this property of being strongly called McCoy is st stable under even linkage. So that's uh, we have seen that here yesterday. I mean, so if I uh, and J are evenly linked, I is strongly called Macaulay if and only if J is strongly called Macaulay. So as Bent explained, this gives you all class of ideals that are the Ricci ideals because these uh, of course, con Macaulay, because you're linked evenly or oddly, that's the same to a complete intersection. Okay, and this includes the perfect I2 and the uh, Grange sign called dimension 3. I mean, perfect of I3 whose resolution is self dual. Okay. So, this includes important classes. Okay, and there is a second very important uh, term that will. Uh, also, Finneke in 85, in this form, that says that uh, I strongly coin Macaulay implies that J is coin Macaulay. So, if this, if you have strongly coin Macaulay on the other, you can pass, you have coin Macaulay and it's on the other side. And if, and that's important for residuals, if it's a geometric residual intersection, then the modulus HI of I over the quotient ring, S mod J, okay, so let's put I bar, are coin Macaulay modules as well. Okay. Ah, sorry. I don't know why I changed ring here. Okay, R mod J. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so this, uh, what I will say about linkage or liaison, and now I'll pass to a residual intersection. So we have seen yesterday the definition of residual intersections. Okay, but I will recall that. So the second part will be about residual intersections. Okay, so let me record the definition. So R is always my coin macro worker ring. So I give an ideal I inside R, okay, uh, and mixed of co-dimension R, purely of co-dimension R, okay, and I will take an ideal A generated this time by uh, S elements, X1, Xs, and I assume it's a proper sub ID of I. Okay, and I will call J. J will be the colon, A colon I. Okay. So re remind the definition J is an S residual intersection. If the co dimension of J is at least S. Okay. 
and it is geometric if further you have that the co-dimension, same thing, of i plus j is strictly bigger than f. Okay, it means that no associated uh, prime of j I mean, uh, contains i. Okay. S. So it's very important that the, the, I mean, S here is the S here and this S here. Okay. You assume that the, the dimension, I mean, the co-dimension of the cone is exactly what corresponds to the number of elements you have here. Okay. So liaison corresponds to S equal R. Okay. That's liaison. Okay. Now, let me say that, I mean, this uh, notion was introduced by Craig Hunecke, I mean, the definition like this, uh, uh, why he was repairing, um, an, I mean, an argument of Artin and Nagata, who claimed, I mean, falsely that, I mean, if you take uh, uh, residual intersections of ideals whose uh, link are coin macoin uh, first links, I mean, even odd class is coin macoin then, Residual should be coin McCoy. The thing is that in the paper of Artin and Nagata, they look more as a, a decomposition of your ideal A as I intersect some, say, J prime, okay, so that the co-dimension of J prime is at least S, okay, and this is not uniquely defined, of course, and uh, I mean, the, the, the mean point is on the non-unique definedness of that, and this gives you a well-defined guy. So now the term of Hunecke in 83 says that uh, if I satisfies uh, the following condition, well, is con Macore first, is strongly con Macore, and the following condition we have seen yesterday holds, and this is called GS condition, so it's a Minimum number of generators of I local is that P is at most the dimension of R local is that P for all P containing I, so that the co-dimension of P is uh, smaller than S, okay, then R mod J is on my coin. And uh, so Hunecke for the, I mean, the inductive argument of Artin Nagata and repaired the gap that was there, okay? And uh, to be able to do such an inductive argument, you need to have residual intersection, okay, up to height S, and up to height S minus one, you need them to be geometric, okay? And this is exactly the condition that is equivalent to the existence of such geometric residual intersection. So if you don't have that, the procedure cannot work. But as soon as you have this, okay, then you can, uh, I mean, you can repair the thing. And using this thing, essentially, this term here, well, this was published later, but the thing was known before. I mean, that, I mean, not only, I mean, the I is strongly like Macaulay, but you look at it over R mod J, you, you are still strongly like Macaulay. And that's the key point in the interactive process. Okay. Now, this was a, Refined uh, by Herzog, uh, Vasconcelos, and Villarreal, who showed that um, a weaker condition is enough. Okay, so that's the term. So that's time of. Um, so this is for Herzog, Vasconcelos, and Villarreal. This is from '85. Okay, and says that if if I satisfies condition G S and you put some condition on on the depths of cosmologies, but these are not as strong, you don't ask them to be coin macore, so you have this condition sliding depths, which means you ask that the depths of H we have seen that the H P minus R is a canonical module, so this should be of eight, at least the dimension of R, but I, but you ask that this, if you look at the next ones, 
will, will be at each dimension of our mod i minus i. Okay, so, so the last one should be called Macaulay, the next not too far, etc. Okay, then, okay, you can also assert that R mod j is called Macaulay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you can apply this. Of course, I mean, this do not depend on S. So this, you have that. But what they prove, that's a good question, is that the converse holds. So if you assume, now also they show the converse. So if you assume G infinity, of course, infinity is just dimension of the ring, if you wish, OK? Uh, then if any residual intersection is called Macaulay, it implies that sliding depth is satisfied. Okay, so this is a minimal condition if you want it to be true for any co-dimension. Okay, you need to satisfy this. Well, if you can make uh, geometric residuals. So if all geometric residuals are coin macaulay okay, and there exists residual in any co-dimension, then you should satisfy this. Okay, that's also what they prove. Okay. So that under G infinity, that's a necessary and sufficient condition if you want that all residuals of all co-dimension are coin macaulay But, well, this is not entirely uh, satisfactory because, uh, as uh, Bernd Ulrich noticed, I mean, you have a strong dichotomy. Either S is R, and you just impose something on R mod I, or S is strictly bigger than R, and then you, have, you impose things on all the, the causal homologies, okay? And what it is was to, oh, no, before I go to that, well, I can do that, but I will, because well, it's not anywhere in historical talk, but anyway. So I will mention this first, but, uh, yeah, why not? Okay, so. Uh, what the Bernd introduced were condition on depths of power. So let me state this uh, condition. So there is another condition we could sliding depths on powers, and this depends on the number, okay, epsilon. And this you ask that the, that the, the depths, okay, of R modulo I to the J to be at least equal. This should be at least equal to the dimension of R mod i, okay, minus j plus 1. For, for j equal 1, it's just going Macaulay's. But you ask this in the range j from 0 to this number epsilon. Okay. So epsilon is sdp0 is just going Macaulay's, and then you, you have more and more conditions, okay? And uh, so what uh, Bernd proved this time of Ulrich in, uh, this is 94, I think, okay, is that now, assuming R is Gornstein, okay, then uh, first, I mean, if I is GS and satisfies, no, GS. Oh, sorry, GS, what I said was correct, but not what I wrote, and satisfies a sliding best condition on power for S minus R, so S minus R plus powers, okay, then two, three things are satisfied. First, what I would call AS, I mean, you have that R mod J is going Macaulay, okay, BS. So this J is always an S residue intersection, okay? The, uh, the canonical model of R mod J is, oh, I should erase something. Is, and uh, yeah, I think it's the first time to explain this. So is what, well, it's known now to be the expected one. So this should be the S minus R plus one symmetric power of I. Okay, and third thing, CS, is that, in fact, omega of R mod J 
has to be i to s minus r plus 1 plus j mod j if it is geometric. Okay? And he also proved the converse, namely, um, if you have a little more, so if you have g s plus 1, meaning that you have, I mean, geometric residual up to co-dimension s, okay, and condition a s prime and p s prime are satisfied for all uh, s prime at most s and s residual s prime residual intersection. Okay, so if you have things up to the difference be between the two, okay, being your thing, then you know that s the strength depth on power holds. And S minus R. So you should have this depth condition, okay? If there exist uh, geometric residuals, okay? And the conical model is the expected one, okay? And uh, what time I have? Well, I have some time. That's what. So I wanted to mention another thing, and yeah, is uh, you have now in all these statements, there is this. Uh, the proofs relies on the inductive technique of uh, Artin and Nagata, and so you you need some kind uh, some GS condition or something. You need GS at least. Okay. Well, maybe you can do it with a GS minus. We're asking a little less, but this would be complicated. And anyway, it's, uh, but there is no hope, at least, to, to have no condition on the local numbers of generators because it's an iterative process. Um, but uh, there was one case where, uh, using the structure theorem on, on the liaison, Bernd and, and Craig showed the following thing: is that if you're in the, if you're evenly linked to a nice Tongi and Macaulay GS ideal, then things are also fine. So. This is uh, Hürnecke and Ulrich in 88. That show that um, if R is Gronstein and I is evenly linked to an ideal that is strongly called Macaulay and, and GS, then, well, R mod J will be called Macaulay for any S residual intersection. And the canonical module of R mod J is isomorphic to the symmetric power, S minus R plus 1 R of I mod A. And furthermore, it has to be, it will be isomorphic to this power. F geometric, okay? And uh, in the argument, it's important to trace, I mean, so they do, I mean, some generic linkage, I mean, and uh, use their structure term to be able, able to deduce thing by deformation. But uh, as far as I remember, in this deformation argument, you need to keep track of the canonical model as well to be able to deform. So it's important to know what is the, what is the form of the canonical model. Okay, so now let me come to, so the, all, in all of this, there is this, uh, I mean, due to the induction, there is this GS condition, and then my student, Hamid Asanzade, tried to get rid of that and to see what could, I mean, what things could be true without that, okay? So, and I will do, so the, if you want the question, at that time was, is this condition GS necessary for these two all, okay? So this will lead, to, lead me to the third part, well, which I couldn't go, I don't know, maybe homological methods. Okay, and uh, well, the idea is to build a tentative resolution of 
for the IU J, for the residual. OK, so we have done something like that with band in the good cases. So in the case, for instance, where, where, where I is a complete intersection, but even more generally, OK? And this comes from an old idea that traces back for we at least to camp or, or if you, uh, or the, you can see that also in the book of Fulton on residual intersection. Idea being that you take your things, but you, you block your idea, then it becomes principal, then you divide there, and you push it down. Okay? In algebraic term, I mean, that's a, the way you also construct VC or North Scott complexes, one way of constructing them. Okay? So the idea was to use this kind of procedure. Okay? And I will explain a little bit how it goes. Okay? So now you have your idea. I recall it's F1, Fp. Okay, and you have your elements, and so your elements xi, you can write them as sum of some coefficients ci, j, f, j. Okay, it's not in a unique way, but you, you write them like this, okay? And now you look at this on the symmetric algebra. So you introduce a ring, which would be s, which is r, t1, t, p, as many variables as the fi's, okay? And you will have this symmetric algebra, which can be seen as a, if you give generators, it will be the quotient of that by the CCG relations, okay? And now, the thing is that uh, this, this ring is easier to handle than the Ries ring. In good cases, they coincide, as we have seen, but this, is, uh, this symmetric blow-up is, is nice because we have a tentative resolution for him, okay? Which is this uh, simis vasconcelos approximation complexes. So, now, you have the complex Z dot, the, approxima the approximation complex of uh, Herzog, Simis, and Vasconcelos. Well, which is, we have seen that a bit yesterday. I mean, uh, you have the causal complex on, of the variable T's of S, and inside this, Okay, you can look at the, so I mean the modulus here are modulus ki of t of s, okay, but uh, this ki is, uh, well, that you can look at, um, yeah. Uh, well, inside this ki, this is just, I mean, I don't know, wedge i of uh, what, uh, r to the p, okay. So inside this thing, you have, the cycles, this will be the cycles of the causal complex on the Fs of the R, okay? That's the sum module here, okay? And so this will be the sub-complex that you have. I mean, so you take the cycles, you extend to the T, so if you want, you take the elements there, but you take coefficients that are cycles, okay? And this is indeed a subcomplex because when you look, when you apply delta T and delta F, this is minus what you obtain by applying delta F first and delta T. So this will show that this is indeed a, a subcomplex. Okay. Now, by the very definition of this, okay, uh, you have. Um, well, I should put a grading here, but well, my, okay, anyway, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you have the, the, by the very definition that A0 of Z dot is just a symmetric algebra with this pre presentation as a quotient of that, okay? And, uh, and also the fact that that is very important is that you, when you look at the homology of these things, these are SI modules that only depend, they only depend on R inside R up to isomorphism. Of course, you can choose many uh, generators, but these modules, these homology, do not depend on the choice of generator, although the comp complex depends a lot, okay? Now, out of this, you, 
what you do is you, you study, you introduce the corresponding things will be corresponding thing on the blow up, so it's called gamma i, okay, to be the sum of C i j t j, okay, these elements, okay. And now you will look at thing of blow up and project, and the, I mean, a algebraic way to do that is that you look at k of the gammas, and you look at it on the symmetric algebra, but you replace the symmetric algebra by this tentative resolution. So you take this complex here, okay? And this will be complex D dot, okay? And now, if you look at the ingredients of that, the module di is a direct sum of some modules E i, I will say what are these, okay, that are R modules that you extend to, to the variables here, and there is a shift of minus i. So this is the, that's important in the argument, it's the degree t sh shift. I mean, this is important that this lies, this, uh, there is exactly this shift, okay. That's the important thing when you want to project what happens, I mean, like in the Egon Norskot, okay. And this E i has a simple expression, all right. It's a direct sum from i equal, from, sorry, from j equal, what, i minus s to i of zj to some power, which is uh, s i minus j, okay? So it's a, yeah, a bit complicated, but explicit, okay? And now you push down this complex, and... Uh, like you do when you construct the Norskot complexes, and you get a family of complexes like the Norskot ones, okay, z dot, uh, they call z dot plus, okay, which is zero. Well, here, it, and this is, the length of that is s, okay, and so this will be z plus dot k s, et cetera, okay, and this will finish. So that's, these complexes are the, the, the expected length, length S, okay? And, uh, and you can describe what are the ingredients. So these are complexes of R modules. This is complexes of R modules. Each graded, these are graded piece of a complex of S modules, but these graded piece are complex of R modules, okay? And, uh, and now, if you look at what, is, what are these ingredients, okay, this will be, well, just the module E I we have before, and S in degree K minus I, so just copies of these E I's, okay? This will be for I at most the minimum of S and K, and for I bigger than K, you have something slightly more complicated, so you have E P minus I plus, oops, sorry, plus I minus one times the dual. This is, yeah, commodity in the T's of the polynomial ring in the T's, but this I write as om R of S in degree I minus K, what is it, minus one into R. Okay. So, I mean, these are just some of copies of these EIs. Anyway. Okay. And the maps are just the, I mean, the, the maps induced by the ones here, by Kozul. And These are pretty simple, except one map, and the, the, map, the transition map here. Okay, so you have a transition map that is more complicated. That is the one that goes from the uh, piece in degree K plus one to the piece in degree KK, okay? Because this will be, what? This will be, I guess, uh, EK, and this will be E K plus P, P plus K, okay? And this is the, what you obtain by this process is the transgression map in a spectral sequence, so this is a bit more complicated to describe, so we'll return on that. But the, uh, the homology, at least, is simple. I mean, the, the A0 of this complex is the k symmetric power of I mod A, and that's easy to see, okay? Now, um, 
for uh, i equal to 0, it's more complicated. And so I will turn that. So I have to, uh, do I have uh, like five more minutes? Or? Yeah, OK. OK, so, well, maybe I'll, with the time, I mean, it's, it's essentially due to Asanzade. I mean, there are parts of it. So I'll put a first theorem or proposition where I put the standard things about that that are, that are very important. I mean, the first thing is that about our thing, I mean, so J dot, which would be defined of, as H0, sorry, H0 of this complex, the degree 0, 1, okay? So this, by what we, by, by the form of this, we, we, this we sit inside R, okay? And uh, this is always inside Rj, which is the column. And this need not be a residual intersection, whatever. I mean, you take any, I mean, two, idea, two finitely generated ideas in a commutative ring, and you, you have this inclusion, OK? And all the important thing is it's not so easy to see that this only depends upon i and a, a and i, sorry, OK? The second thing that is, uh, well, I've already mentioned, I mean, is that the SGO of the k thing is a symmetric power. And the, the third thing that is important, maybe, I, I, I mean, well, anyway, so it's, I mean, it's a good term, of course, I mean, so all well, these are not so easy, but, uh, and the, the third thing that is important to know to start with is that if I is strongly called Macaulay, then you have some acyclicity. I mean, so there are many things about the acyclicity of these, I, I won't turn into that, but if I is strongly called Macaulay, then you have that these complexes are acyclic. Okay, for all k in the good in the range we want, and usually even one more. But okay, so that's that's also important. So this tells us we are, if i is nice and there are weaker condition forcing this, then this will, this will be acyclic in the good range. Okay, so this will tell us things uh, about I mean uh, j and because this is in J, and it will tell you also about the canonical module and all that, because you, we know some symmetric powers, that's what we expect to be the canonical module, and things like that. So then using this, not all this at that time, but using this technology, uh, Hassan Zadeh proved in uh, 2012 The following thing is that uh, if I satisfies conditions running depths, then first you have that uh, J star is coin McCoy. Okay? And uh, this ideal has the same radical. So, I mean, it may differ by, I mean, somewhere, but at least this has the same radical. So uh, I would say that, I mean, now that we have all of this done and what I will explain later, this could be a better definition somehow for, for the residual. Okay, but, uh, okay. And uh, the second thing is criterion to know when this, these are equal. So J star localized at P will be equal to J localized at P whenever uh, A mod R, I'm of a localized at P is cyclic for all P uh, containing I plus J such that height of P uh, is equal to S. Okay. So in particular, if you have a geometric residual intersection, this is always satisfied and this is equal to J. Okay, so now, let me turn oops, to the last part. There are two questions that are interesting. Is first to describe this J star in general, okay? And second to know when it's equal to J, okay? For, 
further than this example, these cases, okay? Besides the geometric case or some case. So let me explain a bit this. Uh, I think I will have time at least for the first one. Okay. Um, so the first thing is for the first question, we, uh, Hoa, Nairitun, and myself uh, proved that this was uh, well, 17, I think. Well, anyway, that uh, if I is strongly on Macaulay, well, in fact, a weaker condition, which is a little more than the sliding depth, has to be satisfied with this SD plus, then J equals J star always. Okay, so if you start from a stronger than Macaulay ideal, then you always have this. So this means, if you want, that if you look at the decomposition of your J star, primary decomposition, so now you need, know it's unmixed and it's called Macaulay, so you can write it like this, with these are primary, your QI is a PI, okay? And then, uh, let me put stars, and you can take a same type of decomposition for, the, for J, okay? Where the radical of this is also PI. Well, under some condition, you can assert that these are unmixed, but uh, even though, even if not, you take a visa, I mean, have a radical this, and, okay? And then you can assert, due to this, okay, then you can assert that uh, QI is equal to Q prime I, or Q star I, well, unless the V of PI is inside the non, uh, well, the non SD plus or non current mac strongly current Macaulay locus of your ideal I, okay? So it's, I mean, unless, I mean, the, the, the thing you link with is, is really inside the locus where it's not strongly current Macaulay or not this. I mean, you, you do have equality. So, I mean, there is a little space for non-equality, but not that much, okay? And uh, let me terminate in saying on what relies this term. So this relies on a, on some duality properties that were also uh, obtained in a very similar way by um, Eisenberg, Hunecke, and Bernd. Okay, that's, and it says the following. So that's maybe the important, uh, and I will just state it. So this is also uh, Juan, Ayrton, and myself. Okay, and I will state in the case where Alice is Gronstein, because that's where it looks the, the best, okay? Oh, I forgot a very important term. Maybe I, I should do that and not this one, okay? I forgot to say what is, what is J star, okay? And I think that's maybe more important. Than, so I, I will explain, I forgot. I wanted to say what is J star, but I moved further. So let me, okay, this is also interesting, but uh, I didn't describe J star, I think, okay? So to describe J star, you have to look, uh, so I will do that in case. I mean, so you have your causal complex here. Over R. Okay. You have your causal complex over R. This is a, a differential graded algebra, okay? So I would prefer to write this as R with a, with a, it's a skew symmetric thing, where R, R of E1 uh, to uh, what, EP, where you put the, the, the derivative of, of EI is FI. Okay. So you look at this as a differential graded algebra. And uh, now you look at the elements xi i equals sum of this cij ej, okay, that are inside this. And you look inside this, you have an algebra, subalgebra, which is the subalgebra generated by these guys, xi1. I S, okay? That corresponds, if you want, to your element X i, okay? And of course, I mean, inside this, you have the borders, okay? You have the cycles, and all of these are in K. Okay, and uh, now, Vinicius Busa and Asanzale describe the ideal G star in this setting. So this is their work, Busa and Asanzale in 2019. Mm -hmm. 
and show that for any ideal A in I, and this works also for any ring, okay, you have first uh, that the ideal A, you can see it as you take elements uh, in what is generated by these elements gamma, I mean, so this psi i, okay, you multiply this by elements, by borders, okay? So if you multiply this and you look at the degree p part, this will sit inside kp, which is r, okay? And this thing is equal to a, okay? So when you look at what you obtain by taking elements, so of degree i and um, p minus i and multiply them, you get a. Uh, when, when you, and now the j star is obtained by taking this element here, but multiplying by guys in z, by cycles, and looking at in degree p. So this, this, this is the description. So, okay, and, uh, okay, and this is important, but it, it, it tells you, if you put this together, that your, your J star is equal to A plus what is generated, what you obtain by taking these elements here and multiplying by, I mean, representative of the classes of the causal homology. So if you know the generators of the causal homology as a DG algebra, you will be able to give, I mean, universal generate, I mean, you have a universal description of the generator of J star. I think I have no time to, <laughs> to continue. Okay, thank you very much. Let's thank Mark, please. <laughs> Are there any questions? Questions for Mark? One of the consequences of Bernd's theorem on the Koimekoliness of residual intersection yes. is that a result about the um, S2 property of residual intersection of U and... Yes, that's another and type of extension. You wanted to know, by right, to have some results about Hilbert function of residual when the residual is uh, unmixed. This is S1, but S1 is technically more difficult than obtaining S2, so we pass to S2 and blah, blah, blah. I mean, there is some connection. Yeah, my, okay, my so you can ask is, weaker yeah. things, yeah. My question is also that theorem about residual S2. Yeah. Uh, as uh, the GS assumption. Can you use these techniques with the causal complex to remove the GS assumption for that one? It's not so clear. It's okay. not so clear. Because to obtain this residual ES2 thing, I mean, you really use the induction and some precise, I mean, uh, some precise uh, tracking in the sequences that Bernd uh, used in his 94 paper to track when you get exactly the, how you, how you can get exactly the vanishing you need for the, the thing to be S2 from these sequences. I mean, this general thing is maybe more, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know, that's a good question. We don't know how to do for, I mean, for, for instance, if you t fix an uh, S that is, I mean, uh, typically much more than dimension, how to get just S residual and not everything from this kind of techniques. And that's okay. not so clear. Thank you. Mark, I have another question. Here you just need SD plus, no, to get the quality. Yeah. Is SD plus enough to give you comecoliness? Here in, in free you need I stronger comecoli. Can you no, 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 weaker? I mean, yeah. yeah, 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 no, I mean much weaker condition are enough. But I wanted to give this in all the range. I mean, for, the, yes. for instance, for the acyclicity of the zero one, SD is enough. That's why yes. this holds. I mean, and then, I mean, you, you need some uh, kind of SD or SD plus condition. It's a bit technical because, I mean, also here R is called Macaulay, so sometimes you need this on the, on the canonical, sometimes you need on the ideal and the kind of depth. I mean, so I wanted just to say that under, I mean, very strong condition, you have all, all, all what you want. But you need much less, yes. Yeah, in uh, fact, you yeah. need much less. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. So are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, 
well, how to say, I mean, but, I mean, certainly you get things for rich ideals, which is part of these, <laughs> but strong economical exactly what it's, I mean, Oh, of course, it's called McClure. I mean, yeah, but it's. Um, I think it's nice because it tells you things about all the even linkage cars in any. So I think that's nice, but I mean, it's not really an answer to a question. <laughs> I would like to thank Mark again 